Alrighty guys, so today what I'm going to talk to you about is the overdraw rest. I'm going to try and explain a little bit on what an overdraw rest is compared to a normal rest. So first thing we get to is looks. And if you can see, it is the edge of the arrow point would sit here for the overdraw. The overdraw rest has the ability to move all the way back. So I could probably have it all the way back here. So that's what it means about the overdraw, whereas the normal one wouldn't have this here, it would be here. So that's the look difference on a overdraw rest compared to a normal rest. Let's have a look at a normal one in comparison. And you can see the burger hole is now well, the arrow would sit right in line with the burger hole. So that would be a normal rest. And that would be the overdraw rest. Okay, so a little bit about on what the overdraw does and allows you to do. So an overdraw rest allows you to bring the point of arrow contact back further. And by doing that, allows you to torque tune your bow without adjusting your scope. So normally when you torque tune your bow without an extension rest, you would have your scope out and by moving it back in and forth, you'd find a spot where it torques the less. So you could fully twist your bow either direction and it's still gonna hit where your pin is pointing at. Whereas normally, if you have your rest fully extended and not torqued tuned, if I twist the rest this way, it means the pin's going to be over here, but the arrow's still going to be coming out straight. So by that theory, I think I'm aiming here. So then the, my point, my um, pin side is here. So I bring it back here, but really my arrow's going to travel to here. Okay, so that's what torquing does. It's twisting the bow and de-aligning your arrow with your scope. So what the overdraw rest allows you to do, by moving it back and forth, you can find that if you're, if you're talking it, so it's pointing over there now, the arrow will still go that direction. And I'm not really 100% sure on how this does this one. By moving this back should make the talking worse, but I don't really understand it. But I am no physics genius or smart in any sense. So I'm sure someone would smarter than me could understand how talk tuning works, but I don't understand how it works, I just know it works. So that is a little bit about torque tuning and why a lot of pros are using an overdraw rest. Now another reason why you can use an overdraw rest is to shorten your arrow length. You have a 30 inch draw, but this is a 27 inch arrow. So by having a shorter arrow means you have a lighter arrow and by shortening the length means you can have a, um, a higher spine. So just say if I was shooting 29 inches, I might need, so this arrow here is a 530 spine, okay? And it's 27 inches. Now, if I was shooting at 29 inch, I'd have to go down to say a 400 spine. And by going down to a 400 spine, means I'm increasing that weight of the arrow. So it goes from say a, a two, hypothetical numbers, it goes from say a 200 grain weight at 530, to a 250 grain weight at 400 spine. So by using a overdraw rest, you have the ability of making a lighter arrow to shoot out of your bow because lighter the arrow, the, the less cast it makes. And the cast is the up and the down. So the lighter the arrow, the less it's gonna travel up and down in its flight. A heavy arrow will come up and then come down. But the heavier the arrow too, the less it gets affected by the wind. So there's a, a catch-22. And I like to use a heavy arrow. Because then I know the only thing the wind's going to affect is me. So the wind might blow me over and I might shoot off because the wind blows me off. But if I know if I get a good shot and the wind hits the arrow, I know it's not going to blow the arrow off its course. So that's why I like to use a heavier arrow than a light arrow. But a lot of people like to use a lighter arrow and that's one of the advantages of using the overdraw rest. So here I'll show you what I mean. 
So here I have the shoot off release, not the shoot off, sorry, the stand black pearl, and it comes with a little safety pin. I lost the safety pin, so I just stick a um, Allen key in there and it still works just as good. So this cannot go off, okay? So don't worry, I'm not gonna shoot into the side of my house because that's where I'm pointing at. So, or into the neighbor's fence now. <laughs> okay, so now when I draw it back, you can see that I've still got plenty of arrow on that rest. But if it was a normal rest, it would slip way off the back. Okay. So that's why, is the main reason why you use a overdraw rest. Now, as I said in, so this is a little follow up on my last little arrow length video on why you use a overdraw rest. And let me just say that last arrow length video was for compounders. It didn't apply to recurvers. And if you want to see a good recurve arrow length video, look up NU Sensei, the great guy who does great videos on archery and he's a recurver. So if you've got some recurve questions or need to know something about recurve, watch his videos because he's n nearly got a video on everything. Absolute great guy. So this, my arrow length video was on compound, not recurve. And this is where it comes back to this too. So that's a little bit about, a little bit about that. So as you can see, it fits on there nicely now. Let me just say, after drawing the Hoyt for a while now, that feels so different. Now, one thing about the overdraw rest is that they can be dangerous. And dangerous why? Is because that at full draw, when the arrow is on the rest, it's, they, it can come back far enough that the arrow is sitting above my hand. Okay? So the arrow over here, and if it bumps off the rest, it'll come down into my hand. And you can shoot through your hand if you're, if you're not careful. That is why an overdraw rest can be dangerous if you're a beginner or really have a hard draw. And me, I really yank that bow back. I, it's a habit I'm trying to get out of slowly. I'm getting there slowly. But the thing is, if you draw back too hard, When you're drawing back, the arrow will start to bounce and then come off onto your hand. So if you've got a really heavy draw back and really like to punch into that valley, they're probably not the best idea because they're going to bounce off and you're going to get stuck in your hand and they're going to be hard to let down and let up. And I even have one of the crew members who's um, been writing a few comments has seen this happen. <sighs> and I wouldn't want to see it happen but uh, six months before I joined the club someone had an arrow blow up on them and go through the hand like in that picture so it does happen and it's not something that just happens randomly it happens a hell of a lot so you've got to be really careful with your archery it's a very dangerous sport so that is a little bit about the overdraw rest and what a overdraw rest is and does so if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit all the other buttons, and I'll see you again soon for another video.